what your eye is drawn to as you look at that top oscillation is that there's a, a pattern of lines which are moving to the right. And those lines correspond to the places in the tube where there's an overdensity and probably overpressure of the molecules in the tube. And it's traveling with a certain speed. And that's interesting also. So we have a wavelength, which is the distance between those places where the, there's the overdensity, and we have a wave speed now as well. How do we describe this uh, a little bit more mathematically? Let's start with a pressure wave. Pressure wave could be exactly uh, w the way we describe a sound wave. And what I'm going to do with this animation is try to stop it to match the, uh, uh, the graph below it. At just the right moment, these lines that you see, which correspond to the regions inside the tube where there's an overpressure or overdensity, are lined up with this sinusoidal oscillatory pattern that I've drawn on the bottom. Now, this graph on the bottom is, you could think of it as pressure on the vertical axis versus position on the horizontal axis, x. Not time, but space, right? Because that's what we're looking at. We're looking at the distance down the tube. And wherever you see the graph go high and peak, you see that in the tube, there's a higher density of the, the molecules in the tube. So this is like taking a wave and freezing it in time. This is what you would see if you, if you could do that. And that's how you would describe it. It has the same oscillatory pattern. Now, with our simple harmonic oscillation, our graph was going up and down as a function of time. Now we've got a graph going up and down as a function of space, x. And we need to uh, come up with a way to describe something that's oscillating both in space and in time. Okay, we can write down the one-dimensional description of a wave, a sinusoidal wave, and not all waves are uh, sinusoidal. They can have different shapes, right? Uh, but a sinusoidal wave would be written y of x and t, position and time, is equal to the amplitude a times sine of this argument. The argument is 2 pi over the period times t, which might be better written as 2 pi times little t over big T, because if you think about it, little t, as little t goes from 0, time equals 0, to the period big T, that little t over big T goes from 0 to 1, multiplying the, the 2 pi. Okay, so 2 pi t over big T minus 2 pi x over lambda, Lambda is the wavelength. And again, x over lambda goes from 0 to 1 as you go through one full wave cycle, plus the phase phi, <coughs> which just allows you to adjust for initial conditions. Now, um, what this equation describes is shown here. And we're just letting time go forward from you know, zero to infinity. The first thing I'd like you to do is just to stare at this one point that's going up and down on this wave. The first thing that you notice is the wave is traveling from left to right, but that point is staying where it is. Of course, the medium is not what's moving along with the wave. The medium stays the medium. Whatever you have, let's say, pressure at a certain point in space is going up and down and up and down sinusoidally. So that's like uh, we could, you know, without any loss of uh, generality here, call this x equals zero. And what do we get? We would get the same equation that we had for a simple harmonic oscillator because we would just lose the term that says 2 pi x over lambda. And we would just have 2 pi t over t plus phi, as we did before when we were just describing the simple harmonic motion of that ball. So you can already see that we've built into this wave description, simple harmonic motion, of every point in the medium. The new thing here 
is that we have this position dependent term minus 2 pi x over lambda. And it results in this wave pattern that's moving from left to right. It's easy to make a wave move from right to left. Just change that minus sign to a plus sign, right? That way, as time goes up, x has to go down, or vice versa. Yeah, as time goes up, x has to go down to keep the phase, overall phase, the same. Now, points on the wave, like the wave crest, have the same overall phase, which is, uh, well, in the case of a sine wave rather than a cosine wave, would be pi over 2, because sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. And uh, so if, uh, if the whole argument of that thing is equal to pi over 2, the sine times pi over 2 is 1 times the amplitude, that means y of x of t is equal to plus 1. Now, you ask, what is y of x and t? Is y the y position? Uh, no, or no, not necessarily. Depends on what you mean by y. Well, if we say that for this oscillate, this wave medium over here, y is the vertical height of the end of the rod, then you can see that, that that's a perfectly reasonable thing to call it y. Y could also be the value of the electric field at a certain point, or the magnetic field, if it's an electromagnetic wave. Or Y could be the pressure at some point, X and T. Y is just a generic variable we chose to use to describe any displacement of whatever it is the medium is uh, from its equilibrium. And if there is a linear restoring force, like a spring type force, you get sinusoidal uh, motion at every point in the medium, or sinusoidal uh, change in the, in the disturbance, you get a sinusoidal wave. So this is the picture you should have in your head when you see that one dimensional wave equation. It's a dynamic thing, it's changing with time. <coughs> Yes. Um, just for clarification, is the phase the entire set of parentheses or just Well, okay. So the fa this phase, the small Greek phi there, is just there so that we can satisfy whatever our initial conditions are for the wave. You can usually pick a position x and or a time t equals zero such that you can make the phase go away or make it a cosine rather than a sine wave. We kind of rarely have to deal with the phase, but um, you, you should think of, though, the whole thing in parentheses as what we were calling the total phase of the wave. It's the total argument of the sine function for the, uh, for the wave. And it's always increasing with time, and it goes through 2 pi every time you go through a full period, t. It also goes through 2 pi every time you go through a full wavelength, lambda. Okay, so in DL, you're dealing a lot with the total phase, capital phi, and thinking in terms of, uh, of that for analyzing a lot of these wave situations in DL. But that's a good question. We distinguish what you might think of as the phase shift of the wave, or you know, the initial phase of the wave, from the total phase, which is the, where you are in the sinusoidal cycle, at any point x or, or t.